You've got a gold mine of content in Confluence. Your team uses it every day, but Copilot isn't talking to it until now. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up that connection between Confluence and Microsoft 365 Copilot so that you'll be able to build agents that connect to and use that data in Confluence, as well as being able to find Confluence data in the search results in Microsoft 365 Copilot. One set up, two experiences. Let's take you through it step by step. You will need admin permissions to be able to do this. So you'll need to be an administrator first in your Microsoft 365 tenant. You're gonna to go to that main admin center, search and intelligence on the left menu there, and then choose this option, data sources, and add a new connection. You'll find there's a bunch of ready to go connections for commonly used business systems here. I'm showing you the Confluence Cloud, pretty similar experience across all of the others. It's really just setting up this authentication and the API access with the right permissions. So we're gonna grab that Confluence URL for the site that you're working with and then give it a display name. You might see I've got a bit of a practice run in there already. So we're just gonna call that something slightly different and then choose that authentication type now I just need to fix up this API so that I get that client secret and the key. So now I am working in the Atlassian developer portal. Again, I need to be an admin on that side of the house to be able to do these things as well and create this new connection to come back the other way. So there are three sections in here. The permission section is the one where we have to do a bit of work. This is the Microsoft documentation that says here are the three scopes that you need to put in. I found though that when I went in and added those three scopes, I got this lovely something went wrong message. And there's clearly a lot more than three scopes that are actually required. They're all sitting in that granular scopes section rather than the classic scopes. So I've done a smart thing here copied and pasted that in there. And now I can actually just go through and search for each of these things. So this is now setting up the API to have all of these permissions. You obviously need to understand what these things are and how this impacts your real use of the Confluence system. But you'll notice that these are all read permissions. And essentially what this is doing by default is it will set it up so that the user will only have access to what they have access to in Confluence. You can set a permission where they'll have access to everything. You're not likely to want to do that. So the default is that it's only what they have access to. So as they use this to build agents, once you've set this up and allowed people to use it, they will be allowed to use it. But if the user using that agent isn't actually got any data in Confluence they have access to, it will just return nothing. Same with the search experience, which I'll show you as well. So this will actually adhere to those permissions. Even if you make the connector available to everyone, the user experience will still hold true with those permissions. So we've got all eight of those permissions set up. Second step here is to do this authorization. This is basically just putting in a URL. There's a version for commercial and a version for government cloud. I'm using the commercial one here, but I'll pop the full link to that in the notes here if you need the government cloud version. And so we just put that one in. It's noting there that I don't have any classic scopes, but that's okay because I've <laughs> figured out that this is what works. And then we're going to go into the general settings. And now I've got my client ID and secret, which is all I needed in the first place. So we're going to grab that, pop it in there and go and grab that other hidden code and put it into that box there and then click authorize. Now you'll notice first thing that comes up here is a, again, I just have to accept all the permissions, make sure that I am happy and it's giving sort of in plain language here exactly what it's got access to. There is another option here, which I've bypassed, which was sitting underneath that, um, that option there that says roll out to a limited audience. So you could choose in the first instance, rather than making this connector available to everyone, to just roll that out to a select number of people to give it a go in the first place. Agree to the terms and conditions, off we go. Now I'm skipping a step here while it's syncing, but there is this option here to enhance by adding a description. It is actually best practice to put a description if you've got lots of connectors, that's gonna work well, but I'm just focused on this one here bit of video editing magic that took about three minutes in real life for that connector to sync in the background and come up with ready status. So there are two ways that we can use this now. The first one is creating an agent. So we're going to go through that first. So our scenario here is that I have actually got in Confluence a whole heap of notes and meetings and collaborations about a bring your pets to work day. Doesn't that sound like fun? And so now this is switching into a user persona. 
any user could do this to say, I want to create an agent that is all about our bring the pets to work day. That's just zoned in on this one particular project, this one particular topic that I'm working with, rather than the main co-pilot experience that's answering questions about everything. We get to a point of sort of setting all that up and it says, would you like to add a data source in here? So I just want to show you this Confluence connector in action along with other data sources, because let's say for our pets day, we've got different kinds of knowledge. You'll see there straight away from your organization that we've got that there. We'll come back to that. But hey, here's a public website that has some information about how to organize a pets at work day. You'll see I can also bring in stuff from SharePoint, Teams chats, and emails. So you can actually create this agent to have access to those things. So if you're also using the Microsoft 365 collaboration tools for chats and emails, then you can bring that in alongside a website and now alongside our brand new Confluence connector, which we have put in there. So what we're going to do now is just activate this connector that my admin has made available to me. So I can see it there. And all I need to do is toggle it on. So all of that other setup is a one-off by the admin. And now the user can go, great, I can build my agent with no code and just connect it to Confluence. All done. So let's create that agent. That takes a second. The idea here of creating the agent, actually, we're going to do one other thing first, which is to change the icon. Just in case you didn't know that you could do this, you can grab a much cuter picture there because our pet day planner definitely needs some little port prints in there. All right, so let's create the agent. The idea here is that I'm creating this perhaps for the working group of people who are working on it. I might create it and share it with the whole organization so that everyone can sort of be more aware of this and chat with it. Lots of different ways you can use agents in, uh, in, the, in the workplace. And especially as we now can so easily make it available for the business user to have this experience to just connect it up to those other systems they use with the right permissions. So let's take a look now at what that means for the actual end user experience. So somebody has created this agent and shared it, and now that agent sits inside that Microsoft 365 Copilot experience. And when I've asked that question, all of the relevant data is sitting inside Confluence. So now this is the same as if I was using anything in Microsoft 365 Copilot, but it's just naturally connecting to that data in the same way that it would to a SharePoint site or anything else. I can see the references there. I can click through and bring that in. So that's when I'm working in that specific pet day planner agent. I've explicitly gone there as a user wanting to ask that question. But if I'm just in the general use of Microsoft 365 Copilot and I ask about that pets, you know, who's in charge of pets to work day in that main experience, that connector is actually still there. So you, it's not just in that agent, I've got that activated in there. And so now what you'll see is I've asked who's in charge. And again, it's come back from those notes that are sitting inside there. Now the new Microsoft 365 Copilot experience here also has a search experience, which connects across all of your Microsoft 365 Copilot stuff, but also those other connectors that you've added. So as I start to come in here and say, bring your pets, you'll see that those results from Confluence are actually hitting the top of my list alongside Excel, alongside PowerPoint and anything else that might be relevant. I can sort this, I can filter by the kind of file I want. So if I want to exclude those Microsoft 365 sources and just go straight to that other one, I can do that. So we've actually got here a fully integrated experience. So you've seen how I can connect up Confluence to Copilot, but there's heaps of other connectors you can use here as well. And this is the whole point. This is not just about saying that Microsoft 365 Copilot just works with the Microsoft things because your business exists across all of these other systems. And it's now really easy to make that connection to use them in agents and the main Copilot chat experience and search. I would love to make more of these. I can't promise you I can do all of them because it comes down to which things I can get free trials for or fairly easy access to set them up. But if there's something else in here that you'd really like to see, hit me in the comments with your favorite system and I'll do my best. Otherwise, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please give this video a like so more people can find it. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.